Hi everybody, Creative Katie, Karen Birchill. Welcome to my channel, Mixed Media Creations. Today we have an art journal tutorial for you. I'm working in my 7x10 Canson Mixed Media art journal. And I tape off the edge, and that's to keep all the gunk from getting into the coils. I also only use one side of the art journal page. I just found that that's what I prefer doing. So I have this stencil from the Crafters Workshop and it's called Circle Tiles. It's one of the new for winter 2019. I am a brand ambassador with the Crafters Workshop. And I am using either the light and fluffy modeling paste here or their regular modeling paste. And I love both of them. I find the light and fluffy one dries a little bit faster, which, you know, we're all impatient. So I decide that I... When I start this, I want to go kind of from corner to corner down the middle. And I want to play with white space. And if you saw the preview of the Finish Art Journal page at the beginning, you'll know that that plan goes south. And that's okay. So I kind of stenciled. And it sat for several weeks at this. Then I grabbed my Naples Yellow and my Quidacridone Magenta. And I'm... <clears throat> putting in these colors and I my attempt here was to get kind of a watercolory look using my acrylic paints but I wasn't pulling it off to my satisfaction so I'm spraying water and what I'm really loving is when the quinacridone magenta and the Naples yellow mix because they give you this lovely coral color this is one of my tricks using a couple tones in the background and it makes for a very interesting background. I also want to catch these colors, you know, darker or lighter in the texture paste that's there. So I'm just adding more color, mixing it, blending it as I go. And after drawing it, I'm not happy and I decide, you know what, white space is highly overrated. I'm going to paint in the corners. It was just, wasn't giving me what I thought I wanted, what was in my head. And sometimes that's what the problem is. You may be sitting there and going, oh, that's absolutely fine. I, I like it. But sometimes we're battling with what the picture of what we want to create in our head. So again, I'm, I'm just adding more color, mixing those tones a little bit to get the, that mid corally tone on there. Naples yellow is quite opaque. And it's not as bright as some of the other yellows. So it's more muted, I guess, is, is the term. So I'm, you know, painting and mixing and, and working this till I get a color that I like. And sometimes you just have to play with it. If it's getting too blendy, I'm gonna stop and dry it, add more color with acrylic paints. Once it's dry, you can put a new color or a different color on top of it. And you know, the brush isn't cutting it, so I'm getting in there with my fingers. That really is my happy place. In that little pot there, in case you're wondering, that is simply quinacridone magenta that I cleaned out the tube. Now I'm just kind of tapping it onto the pad of my finger and rubbing it on the texture paste stencil area just to show the texture a little bit more give a very faint look and then I decide you know what I want this now that I'm not going right through the middle and keeping the white space I want this stenciling on the entire back of this page so I grab the texture paste and my stencil again and Fit the stencil on as best I can with where it was previously, and I'm just adding more texture paste. So I'm kind of looking to see where, where I've missed the stencil. 
And I'm not looking for perfect stenciling here. I'm okay with it kind of being a little bit grungy, a little bit background-ish. So I'm cleaning the stencil and then I'm deciding on focal points. So I play with a few things off camera and I decide I'm going to use this Julie Nutting doll. Now all the materials that I use or some of the specialized materials that I use in this video can be found in the description box below. I have Amazon links. If you shop through the links, I do get a small commission and it's a way that you can support my channel. You can also make a donation through my PayPal link if that's what you prefer. So I'm just painting. I'd stamped this Julie Nutting doll onto dictionary paper and had it cut out and it was in my stash. The dress had not been painted so that allowed me to the opportunity to paint it the color that's going to go really well with my background. So I chose a burgundy color because it really popped and yet it's staying within the same color family. And it's going over that one stencil that kind of turned out messy right there, that one that's still very white. So now I'm adding more color on top of the texture paste now that this is dried. And I'm just mixing it and rubbing it, wipe, putting it on, taking it off with the baby wipe. And I must say, yeah, I'm now much happier with my background here than I was previous. And now I'm just adding some of the yellow, some of the Naples yellow, some of the Acrono magenta on top of the texture paste just to get it to pop a little bit more. And it just highlights the texture and the pattern. I'm working on the Tim Holtz tonic glass media mat and I absolutely love it. As you can see on the right side there is a space a palette place to put your paints and yet on the left side the that's all dark it's gridded and it is and it's black and so as I was pulling out a focal point one of the things I was going to do was collage these brayered papers with Naples yellow that I had cut out for in petal shapes and I was going to make flowers. And then when I decided to do the Julie Nutting doll, these were still on my desk and I thought, oh, I can make these into wings. And then it was a kind of fairy wings and that led right to my quote. And I showed you there, these quotes were part of my sentiment pack number three. And you can purchase those packs if you'd like. Just send me an email at creativekatie at gmail.com. Or you can look at some of my videos and create them yourself. Now I'm using gold and I'm applying it with the pad of my finger onto the textured parts. And the gold just, you know, adds that little bit of shimmer and shine and really brings out the texture paste. But a trick that I often use is I put the dark color first and then I put the light color. And you can see by using the two colors in the background, the Naples yellow and the Quinacridol magenta, I have an interesting background. And there I'm adding some dark, darker color again, just building it up. And this process just takes time. And if you get it where you don't want it, you can grab a baby wipe and get rid of it. It felt really good creating this uh, art journal page. I've been in a slump and it's just been very almost forced for me to create and this one it really flowed I felt like I was in the in the creative flow so it felt really good now I'm just thinning the um, burgundy paint and then the gold paint and splattering with it just to add a little bit more 
interest to my background and kind of add to the grunge look. And that gold just adds so much. So there are the four petals. And then as I have them, I decide, you know, maybe I can stamp something, make it more interesting. And I grabbed several of my stamps and then I decided to go with this script stamp from Darkroom Door. And I'm stamping on there. And that little detail just added so much. You can use any script stamp that you have, text stamp, you can cut this out of book paper if you want, or music paper. It just adds another little detail. And I decide I'm gonna get rid of this at this time and work on the composition for my page. And I decide I'm just going to edge or shade the wings. And I am using the float acrylic technique with the angle brush and just getting a light bit of black. Now, if you don't know this technique, you can check out my technique tag video where I explain it. But you can also shade with your Stabilo All Pencil, Gelatos, you can use an ink pad and apply with a makeup sponge. There's lots of ways to get a similar effect. It's good to have lots of tools in your toolbox. I was really happy with this stamped, stamping this on. Try your different stamps because each one's going to give a different effect. And I'm going to glue this all together with my gel medium. So I kind of trying to get it to stay all together in a spot and I'm gluing the wings to the girl and then I'm going to glue the whole of the focal image. This video took, or this page took under an hour, about 45 minutes all told. And I've sped up this video to just double time. And I'm debating whether I want to cut out the words even more or leave them in that rectangular shape. So when you see me stop and thinking that's kind of, I keep coming back to that. And I'm put off the final saying, the final decision on that till the end. Now, because there is texture paste on the page, I am using a liberal amount of gel medium and I'm pushing the focal point down as I'm gluing it down so it gets good adherence. You kind of need to persist a little bit, but it does work. I'd like to thank Barbara and Jennifer for their donations to my PayPal, to my channel. Thank you so much. I appreciate your support, your comments, you know, sharing of the videos and, and your creationship. I decide I'm going to get some of that burgundy paint and I am shading around the edges of the page. And right now I'm thinking I didn't want to go black, I thought, uh, so I picked the dark burgundy. 
Now this float technique, while it works for shading on the edge, and it's kind of a lazy man's way of doing the float technique here, it's not be as dark or as pronounced as what I would like it. So I, once I get to this stage, I decide to do another way of shading it. I grab my ink tense pencils and I'm, I think I've grabbed it's either Merlot or Shiraz, the color, the wine name. And I am first just coloring it all the way around. Now the ink tense pencils and blocks are ink and the benefit of them over the Neo Color 2s or a watercolor pencil or Sibilo All pencil is when they're activated, they become permanent, which means if I varnish this or I put any wet medium on top of it after it's activated, it's not going to reactivate. The other benefit is with the blocks and the pencils, I have 24 or 72 colors. So I can pretty much have any color. And because I liked how this worked, now I'm going to shade around this girl. And so all I'm doing is with the ink tans pencil, going all the way around it, kind of outlining it. And then I'm just activating it with water and my angle brush. And you just kind of tweak it out and you can activate it as much or as little as you want and get as dark a line as you wish. And just kind of tweaking it out so it flows up into the page. I don't want it to look like I've outlined the girl. That's not a look that I like. I want it to just be a little bit darker, a little bit shade. If you get it where you don't want it, like I got it on her leg, you can very quickly get it off with a baby wipe if you do that before it's completely dry. So back to the sentiments. Magic is all around. You just have to believe. I said, you know what, Karen, done, you know, stop hedging. Put it down as a rectangular. Now, you'll notice here, these are white and there is no white elsewhere on the page and that was bothering me so I did come up with a solution now my sentiment packs or the ones that you create you can print them out this is on copy paper you can print them out onto tissue paper or deli paper which when you glue it down will become more translucent where you will see the background color peeking through and you won't see the white. That'll give you another effect. And I could have done that. I just was wanting to use exactly what was in my stash. So I use this Faber-Castell pencil sharpener with my ink tense pencils and my Stabilo All pencil. It works really well. Now I'm gonna put that same Merlot or Shiraz color and outline my text and I'm thinking maybe this will be enough maybe that'll give it enough continuity with the page it just needed to bring it into the page So once that's all shaded and I'm looking at what I'm thinking should be a done page, I'm not happy with the white. So I grab the Naples yellow and I water it down and I just paint it right on top. There's Naples yellow on the pet on the 
wings of the little girl. There's Naples yellow in the background. And this just made it all work together so much better. And I was quite happy at this point in time. It does push back the black of the print a little bit. That's why I watered it down so it's not completely opaque. Then I take that and put it, make the wings a little bit darker again so that everything is working together. And then I figure, oh, you know what? I'm going to grab the gold and make the wings gold. And that just makes them look more fairy-like. I had so much fun creating this page. It felt good to get into that creative flow. I hope you liked the video. Give me a thumbs up. Share the video with your creative friends. Leave me a comment. I love to hear from you. Here are some close-ups of the finished page, including some of that wonderful texture you get with the stencil and the modeling paste. Bye for now.